policy? So they handle the tickets. Yeah, they handle the processing of them, and they had sent us a sizable, I would say, policy and procedure. So we tried to break it down into something that was simple, easily understandable, easy to administer. Um, I think Lorna and Christine, uh, Lorna, Linda and Christine did a very good job with it. And I'd like to see it approved. Okay. Is there a motion? Can you give us a summary of what this is? So the police have become very active with writing parking tickets and for the most part it's been for handicapped parking. What I've found over the past few months are is that most of these tickets are applicable to vehicles where the handicapped person's placard fell off the mirror or they may have gone with a friend and forgot their placard or um, they just forgot the placard themselves. In each instance that's come to me, they've provided a copy of their placard with a letter of explanation and the ticket. And under the circumstances, since we went from very rarely, if at all, a ticket being written for handicapped parking to suddenly an abundance of them, I think it would be I think it's reasonable to provide the residents with a period of where, okay, let's get acquainted that this is going to happen more often and they'll need to make sure they take the necessary measures to have their placard displayed. So the first offense will likely be waived. Uh, they will provide a copy of their placard, their a letter ex of explanation, and the ticket. If a second offense occurs within 36 months, they can certainly appeal it, but it is not probable that it will be waived. And that is pretty much and the you're policy. You're saying it's likely that it will be waived if it's actually a handicap person? Not if it happens again in within 36 months of the first time. But I mean it won't be waived for, likely be waived for everyone, just those who forgot to put the... Right, they have to have on. a reasonable explanation. Yeah. If it, you know, if the 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 first letter that comes in and the administrative staff is going to handle it, if the first letter that comes in is nothing, just you know, I don't think I should get a ticket, or I don't think I should have to pay this ticket, and that's it, that's provided, then they will need to pay the ticket. Um, but you know, if the if the letter comes in, the appeal comes in, and with it, they've provided a reasonable reasonable explanation, a copy of the ticket, a copy of the placard, everything checks out. That's going to be automatically waived. The resident's not, or, or whomever receives the ticket, is not going to be required to come in for a hearing. If they receive a second ticket within 36 months, and they appeal it, they still have the right of appeal. Mm -hmm but it's not probable that it will be waived if it's the same set of circumstances. I mean, if there's some unusual set of circumstances or they have an explanation that I think we need to take into consideration, then, yeah, it could be waived. But it's not probable. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so is there... Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, one more question. Since this has started in the past few months, have you seen any abuse? Has that been seen? Tickets come up that you haven't had to wait. I'm hoping that you have. No, that it's just been handicapped. We've situation. actually had some instances of where they filed for an appeal, and we set a time and date, and in the meantime, they paid them. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I again, I think maybe people got comfortable with the fact that oops, it fell onto the floor. Those those placards become loose. You hang them on your mirror, they fall off, and. For years, you came to your car, it fell off, you drove away. Now you come to your car, it fell off, but you have a ticket. So I think an uh, introduction period to the fact that we're, we are writing more tickets for handicapped parking is reasonable. Okay. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve the policy? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vote to approve the meeting minutes of July 13th and August 3rd. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And except for review of the meeting minutes of September 7th. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, we have the FY23 snowplow rates for the independent contractors. Is there a motion to um, 
approve those rates. Approve those rates. Can you change it to landscape or is it just port? What did you use, the average or? Looks like for the most part we matched. So. Which page are we on? 21? 25. So we do this periodically, um, and normally we just change the rates. It doesn't necessarily require a vote of the board. Um, however, there is a substantial increase in some of these, and I thought that it was wise for the board to be aware of it since uh, at the end, if we have to do a transfer for snow and ice, and we see more than we normally have in the past, I thought it would be just to be transparent to all. You can see that we've started to become behind the other municipalities that are immediately adjacent to us and snow, snow plow drivers, for the most part, are extremely local, um, and they just go with the highest bid. We just have to make sure we're competitive. And it's not like something we can say, oh, let's just not plow today and not hire anyone. <laughs> it has to get done. Yep. So, um, so we did a pretty good average. We tried to, we really do compete with Bridgewater, East Bridgewater, and Easton, um, and so we tried to stay within the average of those three and match the Bridgewaters as much as possible. Did Chris have a hard time last year getting people at those rates last year? To my knowledge, no, but Bridgewater and East Bridgewater all went up this year. So the numbers yeah. that you're seeing now, uh, they're new so numbers this year. So last year they could have been more comp That's so where we were. Last winter really wasn't that bad. Or the one before that for the most part. No. I, I think, think we're due. We're due, right. No, I think we have to keep up with the market. Is this, do we just increase when the other towns do typically? So I really rely on the DPW director. So in this yeah. case, Chris and Sean both came to me. They reviewed it, um, and we reviewed it then together. Um, but we just try to be consistent with the other two towns. Quite frankly, I'm going to guess, really what happens is, is that Sean reaches out and say, okay, just signing you up again. And they say, oh, just to let you know, you're $20 behind the other person. Now they just went out. That's probably how he finds out. Yeah, you know, that and, makes sense. and so then, you know, it's good on Sean, good on Chris as they get together and say, okay, well, let's make sure we're not overpaying. Mm -hmm. Let's just be what the market is, right. and and make sure we can retain our drivers. Okay, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a seventh amendment to the purchase and sale for outfront media. Um, purchase of 255 Walnut Street. I'm assuming this is just another extension. It's an extension of two items, yes, purchase and sale agreement and the escrow agreement. And I would ask for a vote uh, approval on both. Okay. Is there a motion? So I make a motion that we approve the Seventh Amendment to the purchase and sale and the escrow agreement for Outfront Media's purchase of billboard at 255 Walnut Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a intermunicipal agreement with the town of Easton for fire emergency vehicle mechanical repairs. Um, what is this for? So the fire chief normally now sends that out to a private entity and pays $125 to $130 an hour. The town of Easton has a full-time person certified by the state that does the exact same work. And Easton is willing to charge us $95 an hour. So the fire chief is looking to obviously save some money. Um, Easton would like us to be able to use them. Uh, so I reviewed the agreement, had town council review it as well, and so I'm looking for your approval. It'll be a three-year agreement. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Marilyn Raleigh has resigned from the ADA committee. Is there a motion to accept her resignation and send her a, send her a letter of thanks? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Vote to nominate Martha Anderson as MPO signatory for the Old <coughs> Colony Planning Council. Is there a motion to approve that? So move. Can I, do I vote? You can vote. I mean, you don't get compensated for it. Um, and, um, and again, technically you are nominating her. Uh, the, all the other towns have the ability to nominate as well. If there are multiple nominations, then the OCPC board will actually vote out of those nominations. Uh, historically, nobody in our size group actually raises their hand to, to, so most likely Mary, as she did the last two years, uh, will receive that position. But OCPC will approve it. 
you would be nominating her for that part of the process. Do we have to complete and sign their nomination form, or is that something? Okay. No, it's really interesting being on the committee. They talk about, I was part of the road safety audit at West Street and Manly. So it was interesting having some input in these different things. So I enjoy it. I mean, I picked up little things from my spouse about roads, and so it's kind of, it's interesting for me being able to interpret it and understand it on a, a larger scale for our area. So I, I enjoy it. Awesome. Thank so you. So you go to the meetings and then you get homeschooled on it? <laughs> like <it>. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for volunteering. No problem. Um, you. Second. Okay. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Um, site plan review for 652 West Center Street. This is going to the planning board. Um, I haven't had a chance to look at this. Um, David, do you want to quickly go over? Yep. So I think the best way to explain one more. Um, there it is. So I think the best way to explain it is that this here is Route 106. This is Pleasant Street. Here is Barrett's, um, uh, a pediatric here uh, building. Uh, busy signs is here. And this area right here is usually just overflow parking if you go to Barrett's. It's a grassy area with some gravel um, area there as well. And so that is being proposed to be converted into a 6,000 square foot animal hospital slash veterinarian center. Uh, it's allowed in our zoning. It just requires a site plan review from the planning board. Is it just in the grassy area, David, where this is going to go? Are they? I know there's already a, um, I think it's an eye veterinarian hospital yeah. there. Yeah. Um, Are they going to? It looks like it's going to be, it's going to take up most of this grass and most of the gravel areas okay. right here as well. That, in fact, there'll be no new road. Um, it's going to be close to this parking, so I think you're going to use this parking in order to be able to access this facility. Okay. Do we need to vote on this, or is this when we give comments? comments? It's where you give comments. To the planning board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of times you're worried about, and, and rightly so, but you're worried about residential area. Yeah, this here is the one residential home in the area. Um, okay. Again, that house pre-exists um, uh, zoning. Everything else is all uh, industrial slash commercial. I would like to see more vegetation, to have it blend in more with the area, and to see if it will reduce some of the highways, and the noise from the highway, whatever we can do to minimize that. I would like to see a lot of vegetation, but not spot. I think mostly my concerns would be lighting. Yeah, you know, there's going to be. I'm assuming since it's an animal hospital, it might be open 24/7. I know the one across the street, the New England Animal Medical Center, is open 24 hours. Mm -hmm. So I would think this was. So I just want to be concerned of any lighting that might affect the one resident. I realize they're situated right in the middle of all different types of businesses, but there's no need to compound any further problems with lighting. I can't think of any noise that would come from an animal hospital. I'm just thinking the highway noise coming in. Yeah. If there's vegetation they could put up yeah. to help minimize that. I'm, d I'm just thinking in the... Oh, in Yeah. In that building so is there a motion to send along those comments for consideration so moved. second all in favor aye. Aye. aye and site plan review 405 west center street proposed um, auto repair shop so this is actually a dent wizard uh, facility dent wizard wizard if you have a dent in your vehicle you have the option that you can either go to a body shop, which literally costs you thousands of dollars to repair, replace, and paint. Um, a dent wizard, uh, they specialize in using a special tool that they can actually get behind the panel and pop out the dent, uh, literally for hundreds instead of thousands. It is going to go inside an open bay in the Enterprise Building. It is unclear at this point, although it, we are assuming it's not going to end up being a retail establishment, we think that they're going to be there servicing the enterprise vehicles, so it's basically a sublet to them. 
Um, however, I don't want to go on record saying it's going to be retail because we have no retail. We have not met with them. But in talking to the building commissioner, um, it appears that would be the case. Um, but bottom line is it's already in a facility that has no new building being built. It's in a building that is already uh, has already has automobile traffic inside of it. So if it's going to go anywhere, this is the right place for it. I don't know what comments we would have for that. Is this act, I mean, I would think it's a sublet of an already established entity. Do they have to go through the site review process? So the building commission has taken that position, so. Oh, okay. Maybe if they've been closed for a certain period of time? I don't know. I he's um, he's so taking the, the position that requires a site plan review, so. Um, so so he's going to send it off to the planning board for that. I don't have any comments. Does yeah, anyone else? I don't think I have any comments. Because they're not actually changing building or the surroundings. So no, no comments for me. Okay. So moves. Yeah, you know, just to mention on the animal hospital as I was flipping through this, there it's eight to five thirty. Oh, They'll be open. So okay. it won't be twenty four seven. Okay, so is there a motion to so moved. Sorry, I didn't know we needed an emotional <laughs> Just to send. I apologize um, for that. I guess without, yeah. without comment. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a vacation carryover request. Um, five days. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment period. Anyone? Town administrator's report. <laughs> So this is just an update and a disclosure to the board. As you're aware, a couple of weeks ago, we received an open meal law complaint. Um, and I personally think the board complied with everything, but he had some concerns. And one of the primary concerns really was the fact that when we listed on that agenda on August 3rd, we listed FY22 end of year budget transfers. And his contention is, is that we should have listed what bud budgets it was coming from and what budgets it was going to. Um, I have provided to you the response back to him that the board authorized me to provide at your most recent meeting. And I informed him that that is not always going to be possible because quite frankly, due to open law requirements, it gets posted 48 hours in advance. We do not always know exactly where the money is going to come from. But we do know what budget it's going to go to. So I did two things in my response to him. Um, I and said, uh, was that one is that I said that I would disclose it at the next meeting, this meeting as to what budgets it came from and what budgets it's going to. And the second is, is that in the future, is that we will list what budgets it is going to, since we will know that. A copy of that goes to the Attorney General's office, um, and I think that the Attorney General's office would be happy that we provided that as a remedy. Um, next one is a FYI to the board to let you know that every year by September 30th, we are required under federal law to submit a stormwater management um, uh, document over to the EPA. It is a lot of work. John Delano did the work again this year, um, and I so want to say thank you to him, but I also want to say thank you to Deb Taylor. She is our GIS coordinator, and as the EPA becomes more involved and become more aggressive with this, they are looking for more mapping uh, and more GIS information, so she's done a really nice job, so I want to make sure I, I give credit to her for the work that she's done as well. Next is an FYI to the board that by September 30th of every year, I'm required by law to also provide the school department uh, where we are, where the town is, in reference to its net school spending. Um, I'll wait, uh, let's see, so, yep, that's the document I'm looking for. So you can see, we can blow that up just a tad uh, and go to the right. Um, you will see that the requirement from the state is that we spend about $13.5 million on our school system we appropriated directly for school related activities 17.9, basically $18 million, um, which means that we are over by 4.4 million or 32%. The purpose of this document is because those costs associated directly with the school are not the only cost that the town bears. For example, we also pay health care benefits for, for the school, which comes up to 3.4 million. Uh, we also pay some other administrative costs as well, which is the 140 and the 104. Um, and, uh, and then when you total all that up, 
we actually support the school at $21.7 million. That is both Southeast Regional and the local school. That actually represents 55.5% of our local budget. Is that the four school choice? This has nothing to do with, this is only what we, pro yes, this has okay. nothing to do with school choice. Right, I this know they used that against it to reduce it. I wasn't sure if correct. that was included. So, school, so the, the school department receives school choice funds above and beyond these funds. Um, this is just, what is, it, is the town of West Bridgewater meeting its statutory requirements to fund education? The answer is yes. That's what this, require, this document proves and shows. It has been provided to the school. And I met with Kathy Grant, and she's already supplied it to the state as well. Uh, next is municipal aggregation. Um, I presented this here. There's no vote or anything to, to be had. However, with the cost of energy, um, we just really did a nice job helping the town out on this. We signed a three-year contract. Anthony was involved during the negotiations with them a year ago. We signed a three-year contract that locked in uh, the supply price at 11 cents, 11.35 per kilowatt. And now uh, National Grid's new rate effective on November 1st is actually going to be 33, 33 cents in 89. So basically they are legitimately going to be three times what the amount is. So we'll go back to that previous slide. We will post this on our website. Um, we will um, communicate it out. 90% of the town that could choose to, um, to go on the uh, aggregation have done so. However, for the people who haven't, I just think it's an opportunity. There's no sense in paying three times for the electric. This, in, and with inflation being so high everywhere else, I just really want to do this as part of public outreach to plead with people, take an opportunity and, um, and jump on this so that we can see. <coughs> you still get it, everything through National Grid. Is this posted on the town's webpage? Have we posted it yet at this point? Mm -hmm. So we'll post it tomorrow. Okay. It starts yeah. effective on November 1st. Do so you think it's something you could also post on the town's Facebook you know, page? We'll, because we'll, we'll communicate it out through all our yeah. social media pages. I mean, because I'll admit it, I was anti this in the beginning. I didn't like being told what to do. And they just opted you in mm -hmm. in the beginning. So I opted out. Mm -hmm. But, and, and the savings when you were looking at it at that point, it just wasn't that attractive, but the, now it definitely is. And, and I will tell you, I just looked at a recent report that since over seven years um, that we've been doing this, um, I have the number in my office, but it has literally been hundreds of thousands of dollars collectively that people have seen. Okay. Um, so you're right. $10, $15 a month isn't a lot, but you times that by 8,000 people or 7,000 people times seven years, it adds up to right. real money. Right. <laughs> and now it's literally a third. This is, I mean, at this point with what's happened with utility prices, this is, it's definitely worth it. Yep. Is there a limit Absolutely. on how often you can opt in or out? Yep. Okay. Um, Next is uh, FYI Fire Department will have their barbecue on October 15th at the Public Safety Building. This is part a continuous effort of our 200th anniversary outreach to the entire town. It is free. Show up, have some chicken, and, uh, and have some fun and be able to do an open house walkthrough as well. I think it'll be a really good day. Uh, next one is also an FYI to the board. The board has called October 21st, or you, you um, you approved October 21st to be the Employee Appreciation Day at the Council on Aging. Uh, Christine did a really nice job on this and put the flyer together and has distributed it to everybody in the town, boards, committees, employees, uh, and the administrative staff at the school department. Um, and so on. And we've talked to uh, the COA director, the place is available, and, um, and so it'll be a nice day for everybody. Um, next is, is the town parade. This year, because of our 200th anniversary, uh, we have um, uh, staggered the schedule a little bit to make sure that the uh, Veterans Day Parade will be this year in West Bridgewater. In honor of 200th, we did it in West Bridgewater this year. Uh, so it'll be, it'll start in Stepping Stone Drive for all people that are associated with West Bridgewater and meet here at the Town Hall. Uh, again, kudos to Annie in that full committee, but Annie does a lot of work with this, making sure that she coordinates with the other municipalities. Normally one representative from each committee does speak, 
Um, and so uh, it's usually the chair. So Anthony, I believe you've spoken to yeah, Andy about this. I talked to Linda. We yeah. talked to Linda. Okay, so uh, Annie and I met earlier today, and so she's aware that you'll be saying the opening remarks. Usually the full board is there, and we'll walk and, and, and all those, right? And it would be 9.45 is what time we will meet at Stepping Stone. Uh, next is an FYI, as you know, the Board of Selectmen uh, approved or recommended a statement of interest back in the spring to go to uh, Department of Ed uh, Secondary of Education, or the MSBA in this case, to build a potential new school. There is still ample discussion as to what the next step should be. Do we build a new Rose McDonald? Do we build a new spring? Do we consolidate the two into one? or do we even consolidate those two with Howard into one as well? The long and the short of it is, is that the MSBA here was well represented last week. Mark and I met with them along with the principal from the Rose McDonald School, uh, Kathy Grant and a couple of other school administrators. They toured all of our facilities. It was actually a pretty positive meeting. We met with them for two and a half hours. They seemed to really take a lot of information back. Uh, there's still not going to be the decision until December. Um, but they're weighing all the different options as to what the next step could be or would be. Uh, and last is, is uh, the water department has four wells. A couple of them are offline for various reasons. And unfortunately, bad timing. A motor broke uh, in one of the wells over the weekend. And so as a result, the one well that we did have that was operational, if people continue to use water at their full normal use, we were not going to generate enough water on a daily basis. So the water department issued this on Monday morning. We distributed it on our social media pages as well, providing an FYI to the selectmen so that we're aware and anybody else is watching this. I will say with the amount of rain that we received this week that has helped um, because we don't have to pump as much. Uh, the motor has been replaced. That is a good item. In, in, in addition to the motor being replaced, we also has to have an electric board that has to be replaced. Apparently there's only a couple of people in the state that are certified to do that. Uh, they are, have been scheduled to be out this week. So the anticipation hope is, is that once that board is replaced, is that that well should be up and running at full capacity a week uh, from now, so middle of next week, worst case at the end of next week, where they can then lift this. Um, it's never good timing for this to occur. However, nobody's really watering their lawn in October. We are getting grass. Nobody's filling their pools in October. Um, and so on. So at some level, we did luck out that those things happen. So that's that. Okay. Thank you, David. Um, with nothing else, I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session, not to return to open session, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation, Specifically, out front media LLC versus Town of West Bridgewater Board of Appeals, since, in my opinion, as chair, strategizing in open session may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the town. So moved. Second. And a roll call vote. Anderson, yes. Mm -hmm. Rays, yes. Kennehan, yes. We're now in executive session. <laughs>